Um, the cell for cell transport, we are going to explain the passive and active transport. Eh, yang ni awak sebenarnya dah belajar kan masa sekolah dulu passive dengan active basically I, I I am sure that everyone remember active transport requires energy passive transport require uh, does not require energy cuma sekarang kita nak enhance sikit kita punya pemahaman tu dengan penjelasan bagi setiap jenis yang ada di ada pada uh, setiap jenis transport transportation dan kemudian ada tambahan bulk transport. Okay. For passive transport is the diffusion. The fusion of a substance across biological membrane. Okay. Mesti, yang ni kita cerita passive transport. Um, the movement of substance across biological membrane. Mesti ada melalui satu membrane. Biological membrane. So, biological membrane tu adalah plasma membrane lah. Uh, membrane plasma eh. The types of passive transport include simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion and osmosis. Ha, jadi saya tahu ramai yang masih ingat lagi osmosis ni apa, ia berkaitan dengan apa. Simple diffusion pun sama. So it is a random movement of solute. Mesti melibatkan bahan eh, bahan terlarut. So simple diffusion, in simple diffusion the particles or the materials that move is the solute itself. So the solute is uh, move from region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. So this concentration is referring to the concentration of the solute. So it must move through a sele selectively permeable membrane. Gunakan istilah ni eh, jangan guna uh, yang lain. Kita guna selectively permeable membrane. Kita tak guna dah semi permeable. Semi permeable membrane tak guna. Kita gunakan selectively permeable membrane. Sebab apa? Plasma membrane, uh, membrane plasma dia memang memilih nak benarkan bahan apa yang lalu. Ada bahan boleh lalu fosfolipid, ada bahan boleh lalu uh, liang protein, ada bahan boleh lalu, uh, sorry, channel protein, ada bahan uh, tak uh, kena lalu tapi um, uh, kena ada tenaga. Jadi selectively permeable. And simple diffusion we, uh, does not use energy. It will occur continuously until equilibrium is achieved. Equilibrium ni apa? Maksud seimbang, uh, di bahagian kalau kita ada satu sistem, ini adalah membrane, selectively permeable membrane. Jadi sistem A dengan sistem B, dia dah contain the same number of solute. Eh? So this is a simple diffusion. Uh, the substance, kena ingat what kind of substance that can pass through the plasma membrane using just the simple diffusion. Okay. Uh, the example is the gases. Eh. Paling mudah kita nak ingat badan kita yang paling senang nak meresap adalah gas. Oksigen dan carbon dioxide. Also lipid soluble substances such as the steroid hormone. Bukan steroid saja, hormone, steroid hormone. Steroid hormon ingat lagi tak contoh steroid hormon? Uh, simple diffusion, uh, okay ni boleh baca dah sama benda yang saya terangkan tadi. Cuma tengok gambar aja. Okay, diffusion of two solute. The yellow solute has higher concentration than the purple solute. So yellow solute will move from A to B. Okay, B, uh, the purple solute will move from B to A. Uh, the higher rate. Yang higher rate, yellow, will move in higher rate sebab dia concentration lebih tinggi. Okay, kemudian dia akan bergerak, dia akan bergerak semua keluar ke kanan ke kiri kan sampai achieve equilibrium. So kalau nak tahu achieve equilibrium, uh, we have to count the number of the solute. Ini ikut gambar kan? Sebab ni tadi ada 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So to achieve equilibrium, there should be 6 yellow uh, six yellow solute at both A and B. While for the purple, it should have 3 at each, at each part, at each A and B. Eh? The rate of the diffusion depends on the concentration gradient. Sebab tu tadi bila saya kata uh, when I mention uh, the yellow solute 
has a higher rate because the concentration gradient is 12 kepada kosong. Kan? A 12 dekat B kosong berbanding dengan 6 dengan kosong. Jadi 12 kosong lebih tinggi gradient dia. Distance of particle movement lebih jarak, lebih perlahan. Uh, size and shape of molecules to pass through the membrane lah. And then temperature uh, because as temperature increase, the vibration increase kan. The, the, the molecules will uh, apa, hit each other, they akan collide with each other and move faster. Right, electrical charge or polarity. Uh, the examples of diffusion in living organism, uh, the easiest example is always the gas exchange in our lung or from alveoli into the into the blood capillary. Another example is the um, diffusion of substances, the nutrients, uh, digested food from our gut into our blood cells. Facilitated diffusion. Kalau tadi simple, so dia boleh berlaku as easy as ABC. Um, just like that, they can pass through the phospholipid bilayer. Sebab uh, simple diffusion din, they pass through the phospholipid bilayer, dia terus lalu saja. Um, facilitated, facilitated diffusion, it has to, it cannot pass through the phospholipid but it has to pass through the protein. Protein that's embedded in the phospholipid bilayer. Okay, uh, jadi facilitated diffusion ingat dia mesti melalui melalui protein. Okay. So movement of ions, it is already specified here. Ions or polar molecules, bahan-bahan yang bercharge, molecule yang bercharge, berpolar. Uh, from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. With the help of transport protein. Mesti ada transport protein. Dia helps certain a facilitated kan. Hmm. Jadi protein, transport proteins are channel or carrier protein. So we will show you the uh, what's the difference between a channel and a carrier protein. And still does not use energy because uh, follow the concentration gradient. Let's look at the uh, diagram here. Right. The outside of the cells uh, has lower concentration of the red substance. So the red substance will pass through the protein, okay, move and then expel out. If it pass through a channel protein, then it will be easier. Sebab dia akan pass through je channel, terowong kan, macam kereta lalu terowong, menora tu, lalu je. Tapi uh, for carrier protein, there is an involvement of a uh, change of shape. The protein shape will be changed first. Uh, dia akan berubah bentuk baru. Uh, okay, sorry. The substance have to bind to the active site of the protein first ataupun bind to any parts of the protein. And then the protein change its shape and expel the uh, the substance in uh, into or outside of the region of the cell. Okay, from higher to lower. The channel protein provide a corridor so it will allow specific polar molecule ions to cross the membrane. It is a fast transport. There is no change of shape. Includes ions and also water. For those uh, protein that allows water to pass through, it is called aquaporin. Eh? Aquaporin. While for carrier protein, it has a specific binding site. So protein will change a conformation. Conformation is similar to shape. Jadi kalau tak ingat perkataan conformation or tak, eh, tak pasti nak eja conformation macam mana, kan takut salah eja jadi conformation kan. Uh, tulis shape je pun tak apa. Protein change shape to translocate the solute. Uh, so it involve a larger molecule. Tadi ions dengan oh, air kan, those are small considered as smaller than glucose and amino acids. Usually monomers are considered as um, large molecule. Lah. Ada soalan nak tanya? Okay, aquaporin. 
two molecules that can cross a lipid bilayer without help from membrane proteins are oxygen and carbon dioxide. What property allows this to occur? Maknanya, awak kena tengok, for simple diffusion, dia sebut tadi, bahan yang macam mana yang akan uh, pass through the plasma membrane uh, by simple diffusion. Itulah propertiesnya, iaitu small molecules, non-polar molecules. Betul tak? Betul tak? What property allows this to occur? Oksigen and carbon dioxide, dia dah tulis cross a lipid by layer. Maknanya, this is simple diffusion. Soalan ni pusing je balik. Kalau tadi kenyataan, simple diffusion occurs atau allows uh, non-polar molecules, small, pol small non-polar molecules. So, dia tanya balik, what property allows this to occur? Dia bagi tahu contoh siap-siap. So, oh, the property should be... Huh? Yang, yang concentration sama. Okay, faham. Tak, dia tanya what property allows this to occur? Apa property oksigen dan carbon dioksida yang membolehkan dia melepasi plasma membrane secara simple diffusion? Faham dia tak? Property itu maksudnya dia nak apa cara dia? Ciri-ciri. Property is ciri. Oh, ciri. Ha. Property is ciri. Tengok eh. Ni, lipid soluble. Lipid soluble. Uh, Non-polar, small molecule. Ni, ni. Solute, hydrophobic, non-polar, small and gases. These are all properties ataupun the kind of substances that can pass through the phospholipid bilayer through simple diffusion. Itu maksud soalan tu tadi. Dia tanya what the what are the property? Ha, jadi dia bagi contoh, dia bagi contoh oksigen and carbon dioxide. Small molecule also include H2O. Tapi H2O sebenarnya dia boleh pass through the um, aquaporin, the channel protein. Non-polar, oksigen, those are non-polar dengan carbon dioxide. So ingat eh, jadi kalau soalan ni muncul lagi nanti, ha, jangan jangan tak faham apa maksud properties. Boleh? Boleh. Finish? Okay, Boleh. Okay, good. Yang lain-lain faham tak? Yang faham, lain, lain Faham. faham. Okey. Jadi kita bincang dalam telegram pun boleh. Okey, osmosis. Osmosis mesti ada movement of water. Dia specific kepada H2O. Kalau tadi movement of solute Ha, kalau movement of solute, dia guna higher concentration to lower concentration. Tetapi bagi osmosis, higher concentration uh, sebab dia melibatkan movement of water. Jadi bila kita guna higher concentration, dia dah jadi contradict dengan uh, konsep concentration adalah tinggi solute. Betul tak? Sebab tu kita tak guna istilah bila kita nak uh, define, nak perjelaskan maksud osmosis, we cannot use Um, higher concentration to low to low concentration cannot. So we use high water potential to low water potential. Okay. Can anyone um, give an idea what is water potential? Okay, water potential maksudnya bahasa Melayu dia keupayaan air. So kalau kita guna istilah bahasa Melayu, adakah lebih memberi gambaran yang lebih mudah kepada awak untuk faham apa dia water potential. Uh, is the tendency of water to enter or leave the solution. Okay, it's a tendency, the ability. Potential kan keupayaan kan? Keupayaan, kemampuan. So, water potential is actually about whether the water can move or not. If the water can move and leave the um, Uh, leave the region, kawasan tu, maknanya dia punya keupayaan dia tinggi. Kalau dia tak boleh bergerak, it cannot move away. So, the water potential is low. Okay, water potential. Potential is ability to move. Ability to move. Tadi Bak kata, uh, Fu dia kata ability to leave uh, the region kan. Hmm, jadi, move tu leave the region lah. Uh, 
So what makes them unable to move? What makes water unable to move? Air, dia sepatutnya boleh bergerak sebab dia fluid. Jadi keupayaan air dia sepatutnya dia berupaya bergerak. Ha, jadi nilai dia nanti kita belajar kemudian. Eh. Ha, tetapi apa yang menyebabkan air tidak boleh bergerak? Ha, so Jehan. I think madam because it has low water potential means the solute is higher. Oh, so you, uh, your answer would be the solute that is able the water to move. Eh? Yeah. Yes, correct. Solute. The presence of solute will cause the water unable to move. Maknanya solute ni bila dia ada dia akan memegang air. Ataupun air memegang solute. Jadi air tak boleh bergerak. Dissolve material. Faham? Jadi air sepatutnya boleh bergerak. Bila ada solute, dia tak boleh bergerak. That's why when solute is high, water unable to move ataupun the water potential is low. Water potential low. Jadi bila awak dah faham apa dia water potential, it should give you an easier uh, easier understanding um, why solute A high solute, water potential low. Tu sebab saya perlu tanya dan saya perlu perjelaskan. Jadi nanti you boleh faham, uh, boleh kaitkan dengan nilai water potential kita akan belajar. Eh. So osmosis is about the movement of water from a region of high water potential to a region of low water potential. Sebab tu kita gunakan istilah water potential instead of higher concentration. And osmosis also occurs through selectively permeable membrane until equilibrium is achieved. Maksudnya, um, the water will continue moving from left to right or right to left, into or out kan. Uh, tapi net movement dia dah jadi kosong. And without using energy. Madam? Yes. Nak tanya kalau... Uh... Soalan yang Madam tanya pasal pergerakan air tu uh, tidak bergerak boleh ke bagi jawapan sebab equilibrium is achieved? Um, equilibrium is achieved sebab di sini. Hmm, tadi soalan saya sebab saya nak tanya tentang keupayaan air. Keupayaan air. Equilibrium is achieved actually sebenarnya air tu masih bergerak cuma net movement dia je kosong. Faham tak? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Ah, itu 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 perbezaan dia. Ah, cuma bila soalan nanti dia dah menjurus kepada bentuk-bentuk soalan nanti kita akan bincang kemudian lah. Ah, macam mana yang dikatakan equilibrium is achieved tu? Cuma tadi sebab soalan saya ialah ah, apa yang menyebabkan air tidak bergerak? Ah, yang menghalang air daripada bergerak? Itu memang saya tanya sebab ia berkaitan dengan solute. Sebab nak menjurus kepada um, water potential tu, eh? Contoh dalam gambar ni, the hypotonic solution, tengok hypotonic solution, the level of the water is similar, uh, is the same, sama. But then the number of the solute is different between these two, these two system. Kita tulis ni A, ini B. Uh, B has higher solute. So, low water potential or high water potential? Low high water, water. Uh, low water potential. Low water potential. Thank you eh. Sebab apa the solute will hold the water or and uh, disable the water from moving easily. Dia akan menyusahkan air untuk bergerak. Jadi kadar air yang bergerak daripada B ke A is low. Mungkin ada yang bergerak tetapi perlahan. While the movement of water from A to B is higher. Okay. Uh, sebab ini adalah hypotonic lebih mudah, lebih banyak air yang bebas. Jadi lebih banyak air bergerak daripada A ke B. Sebab bila kita kata lebih banyak, B ke A ada juga air bergerak. Ini konsep dia awak kena faham eh. Air bukan bergerak hanya daripada A ke B saja, Tetapi ada air bergerak daripada B ke A. Tetapi kadar daripada A ke B lebih tinggi. Movement of water from A to B is higher than B to A. Jadi bila kita kira nanti akan berlaku peningkatan air dekat B. Uh, kalaulah sama, kalau sama, kalau kat sini sama, pergerakan air yang dikatakan no net movement. 
Note aja ni eh. Kalau ni kita akan tolak katalah nilai. Kita akan tolak A lebih besar ber B. Jadi A tolak B dia akan ada satu. Satu nilai X. Tapi kalau A sama dengan B. Kalau A sama dengan B. Kadar pergerakan A ke B sama B ke A. Which is called as equilibrium. Jadi itu yang bila kita tambah tolak. Dia tak ada no net movement. Tu maksud equilibrium. No net movement. Bukan bermakna tidak ada pergerakan air langsung. Air masih bergerak tetapi kadar A ke B sama dengan B ke A. So this is what we call as equilibrium. Ha, sebab tu saya soalan awak tadi, uh, menjawab yang ni menjawab soalan awak tadi bila dia kata, uh, awak kata uh, reach equilibrium. Saya tanya kenapa tak bergerak. Ha, jadi yang tak bergerak, dia bukan tak bergerak langsung bila equilibrium ni tetapi kadar pergerakan itu sama, sama cepatnya, kadarnya sama. Sebab tu equilibrium means no net water movement. Okay. Uh, bila no net water movement doesn't mean the water does not move. But the rate is equal. So in osmosis, uh, kena ingat water molecule can pass through the pores but the sugar cannot. So the sugar will stay and only the water move. Ha, nampak tak ni kat sini? Ni A, ini B. Ni the, the number of water molecules are higher. Ini ada water molecules yang um, hold by the sugar kan? Ha, sebab dia larut kan? Jadi ini yang ni tak boleh bergerak. Air ni tak boleh bergerak. Jadi air yang boleh bergerak lebih banyak A ke B. Manakala B sebab dia banyak solut, banyak air yang sedang dipegang oleh solut-solut tersebut. Jadi dia tak boleh bergerak. Jadi kadar yang boleh bergerak sikit berbanding yang A ke B. Ha, jadi ni tak ada, ini dia akan bergerak A lebih bergerak lebih banyak ke B. B akan bergerak juga ke A tetapi sikit. Sampai reach equilibrium. Okay, reach equilibrium. Maksudnya level air akan jadi berbeza. Bilangan air akan jadi berbeza sebab dia nak menyamakan dengan uh, kata perkataan tadi. Alright. Uh, jadi kat sini dia akan bergerak. Masih bergerak, berlaku pergerakan air. Uh, masih inilah yang dah jadi equilibrium. The movement or from A to B equal to movement from B to A. Tapi level air dah berbeza. Air tetap akan bergerak. Eh? Air yang free ni tetap akan bergerak. Boleh faham? Uh, Madam. Ya. Yeah. Maksudnya Madam. Uh, water potential ni dia depends dengan concentration of solid lah medium. Kalau solid tu lebih tinggi, so water potential kita uh, rendah macam tu eh? Yes, betul. Your conclusion is correct. Oh, okay. Thank you, Madam. Ah, sebab apa? Sebab tu kita belajar rumus uh, rumus water potential kejap lagi. Kita tengok eh. Awak boleh tengok ni baca ni. Eh, sorry. This is the type of solution uh, that involve okay, hypertonic. Tonic is referring to the solute lah. So bila hypersolute, maksudnya uh, this solution has high concentration of solute. So kita boleh katakan dia pekat lah, concentrated, more concentrated. So in a hypertonic solution, the water is hold down by the solute itself. Alright, concentration of solute outside the cell is greater. Maksudnya ni kalau cell duduk dalam hypertonic solution, nah jadi that solution has a greater solute concentration. So when our cell, for example the erythrocyte, eh, erythrocyte immerse in a hypertonic solution, jadi kat luar solute lebih tinggi, jadi pergerakan air dari luar ke dalam rendah berbanding dari dalam ke luar. Uh, so water will move out of the erythrocyte and Renated. Eh, shrivel, shrink kita boleh guna. Shrink tapi dia punya uh, scientific terms kita boleh guna crenated. Kecut. While in plant cells um, the water will move out of the out of the plant cells and then causing the membrane plasma of the cell pull inward ataupun pull away from the cell wall. Jadi plasmolyse. The term we use here is plasmolyse. Okay, ni kita refer kepada buku rujukan Campbell. Memang diguna istilah untuk ni plasmolyse. 
in isotonic solution meaning uh, the solution has the same concentration of solute so there is no change no change doesn't mean water does not move into or out it means that the water move into the cell is equal with the equal to the water move out of the cell so no changes no net no net movement similar with the plant cell okay the, the term that we are going to use to uh, to describe the condition of the cell is called flaccid eh gunakan flaccid um, ini kita ambil kita guna kita refer kepada uh, Campbell eh while in hypotonic solution uh, because water will move from the solution into the cell uh, into the cell so the cell will swell first first dia akan swell dia akan bengkak dulu and because uh, animal cell does not have plant cell, uh, uh, cell wall so the cell will continue to swell receiving water continue to swell and then eventually it will burst kalau erythrocyte kita guna istilah hemolyse sebab ada hem kat sini eh while for plant cell kita kata dia terjit dia jadi segah terjit terjit because it uh, plant cell has the cell wall to maintain ataupun untuk um, overcome the um, the pressure that caused by the increase in water di the Bila ada pressure, ni pressure ni nanti kita akan gunakan dalam rumus nak kira water potential. Hypertonic solution, okay ni boleh tengok, tak faham boleh tanya. Ni saya dah terangkan tadi. Okay now the concept of water potential. Ini yang tadi dah terangkan tadi. Uh, tadi siapa yang tanya pasal uh, solute, uh, water potential maknanya lagi banyak solute, lagi rendah water potential. Yes, correct. Okay, uh, sebab tu kalau dalam dalam uh, haiwan kita tak ada pressure potential eh? Ni pressure potential Yang dikatakan pressure potential tu tadi yang saya lukis sel tumbuhan Air masuk dia akan terjit Kemudian bila terjit sebabkan ada sel wall dia ada satu daya yang akan menahan uh, Tekanan air yang yang masuk tadi Okay Kan bila macam ni, uh, bila air masuk, okay ni air masuk menyebabkan sel segah. Sebab apa segah dia tolak, air tu akan tolak sel tu dia akan jadi uh, segah lah. Uh, dia macam mengembang. Tapi sebabkan ada dinding, pengembangan itu dihentikan ataupun dia akan overcome by the pressure by the, of the cell wall. Jadi ini yang dikatakan pressure potential sebab tu bila tambah uh, bila tambahkan dia jadi uh, water potential eh? Kita masuk dalam rumus sekali Right Tapi bagi uh, sel haiwan Dia tak ada pressure potential ni Kecuali atmosphere, atmospheric uh, pressure uh, Jadi selalunya kalau uh, sel haiwan Kita boleh anggap ni So the more The more solute potential Jadi the less water potential Sebab solute potential nilai dia negatif Pressure potential nilai dia sentiasa positif. Jadi kalau ni kalau solut tambah solut tambah satu katalah tambah setiap tambah satu solut adalah negatif satu. So water potential akan jadi negatif satu. Tambah dua. Jadi negatif tiga. Water potential akan semakin menurun, semakin menurun, semakin menurun. Okay nilai dia sebab dia negatif. Alright. Boleh faham? Jadi Kita tengok seterusnya. Water potential is used to predict the direction of the flow of water. So water molecules move from hypotonic solution to hypertonic solution. Alright. Dia kata pure water has zero kPa. Maknanya the water potential for pure water is zero value. Sebab dia okay. tidak bahan asli sebenarnya. Dia tak ada bahan apa? Bahan asing. Ya, yeah, there is no solute. Pure water apa? Masuk pure water air. Pure water apa? Yeah. Air tulen. Air tulen maksudnya tak ada apa-apa solute. Betul. 
So tak ada apa-apa solute Then zero lah Sebab tu The highest water potential value Is zero We will we will not have a value More than zero, tak ada Tak ada water potential Sama dengan satu, dua Tiga, seratus, tak ada We will not have that We will only have zero and Lower and negative Faham? Faham, Madam hmm. Madam Yeah Is pure water is the same as distilled water? Yelah, basically distilled water tu dia pun pure water lah Ah, uh, okay, okay Thank you, Madam Sama Ada soalan lagi? Alright So, faham eh? Kalau kita ada katalah satu skala kosong satu Negatif satu, negatif dua, negatif tiga Nilai water potential akan bergerak daripada sini pure water Pergi ke seterusnya It will not go to the right value eh, tak ada Jadi ni fakta ya, awak kena ingat The highest water potential value is zero So the greater the solute, the more the solute, the more negative the uh, value, the less water potential. Ini pure water potential. Um, we add some solute, so it will have a negative value. We add some more, the solution become more concentrated, so the value becomes more negative. So water will move from the pure water to a hypotonic solution then to the hypertonic solution. Solute potential affect the direction of osmosis. When solute are added, they will bind to water. Ni yang saya ceritakan tadi. Jadi apa yang awak tak faham dengan apa yang saya ceritakan atau awak, awak baca ni awak tak faham. Okay, the value is always negative so the greater the solute, the more negative the water, solute, uh, the uh, solute potential value. The pressure potential is the physical pressure occur, occur due to the presence of cell walls and the, the value is always positive. Nampak ni, due to presence of cell walls. Jadi, for those cells that, that does not have cell walls, they don't have the Pressure potential value. Ada orang nak bercakap ke? Okay, turgor pressure. Turgor pressure ni caused by the um, caused by the water, eh? water inside the cell. So, the more water enter the cell, the more turgor pressure will be produced. Then, pressure potential will be uh, will be will, will arise Uh, due to the um, to due to the turgor pressure. Jadi sepatutnya turgor pressure campur uh, pressure potential dia akan jadi kosong. Sama macam kalau kita awak belajar fizik, uh, kita nak tolak dinding. Kita tolak dinding tu adalah pressure keupayaan kita. Tapi kemudian dinding akan hold back. Uh, itulah Uh, yang dikatakan pressure potential. Jadi keupayaan dinding tu akan jadi sama dengan keupayaan kita. Sehinggalah kita punya keupayaan menjadi lebih tinggi daripada, daripada keupayaan dinding, barulah dinding tu akan roboh. Okay. Ini istilah yang dia akan digunakan, awak boleh baca semula. Terjit, kalau animal cell lies, kalau erythrocyte kita boleh guna hemolyse. Cell swells and burst, jangan lupa mesti ada swells dulu. Cell swells mesti bengkak dulu sebab dia terima air dia tak boleh terus tiba-tiba masuk air pum pecah eh. So the cell swell the cell swells and uh, eventually burst. So the cell is said to be lice. Uh, dia punya uh, fenomena tu adalah uh, hemolyse ataupun lice of cell, cell lice. Cell lysis ah uh, lysis eh. Uh, kalau hypertonic kita guna istilah plasmolyse. Uh, dia punya plasmolis ni, dia punya plasma membrane menjauhi uh, moving um, apa ni, uh, away from the cell wall, menjauhi. 
animal cell. Kalau animal cell pula dia kita guna istilah shrink and crenated. In isotonic, kalau plant cell kita kata flaccid while animal cell normal condition. Ni boleh tengok dia punya summary eh. Okay, soalan satu saya tak nak. Kita tengok soalan dua. Uh, Balkis. Balkis boleh bagi tahu arah arah uh, pergerakan air. Yang calculate tu saya tak nak. Saya nak show the direction of water. Tapi you describe je lah the direction of the water. Daripada C ke A ke, C ke D ke, B ke D ke, A ke D ke, A ke B ke, A ke C ke. Uh, I think B to A. B to A? Yeah. Why? Um, because the solution condition is negative. I mean... Um, Negatif 250 is more um, lebih besar daripada negatif 200. Yes, I'm not sure. Hmm. <laughs> okay, dia punya pressure potential sama untuk semua sel. Jadi kita boleh abaikan yang 35 kPa. Sekarang ni kita tengok solid potential. Daripada solid potential kita tahu sel mana yang hypertonic. Yang yang ada solid yang lebih tinggi. Sebab bila dia ada solute yang tinggi, maknanya water potential dia rendah. Betul tak? Betul tak? Betul. 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 Jadi Betul. air akan bergerak daripada mana ke mana? Betul. Ia akan bergerak daripada A of course pergi ke B, A boleh pergi ke C, B pergi ke D, C pergi ke D. Siapa tak setuju dengan saya? Boleh tanya setuju, eh? Setuju. Setuju je lah kan nak cepat. <laughs> Tapi betul kan yang saya cakap? Ada siapa-siapa yang tak setuju? Ataupun sebenarnya dia tak nampak apa yang saya terangkan tu nak tanya. Boleh tanya. Silakan. Okay, what is the direction of water in this tube? A ke B atau B ke A? Uh, what do you get? Uh, A, A ke B, madam. A ke B, bukan B ke A? Uh, A ke B. Okay, kita tengok dulu. Tak apa. Mungkin akan ada yang ada keputusan yang berbeza. So Yuva Sanggari kata A ke B. Um, Roshaida, no Roshaida. What what about you? What is your what what is your answer? Uh, A ke B, madam? Okay, A ke B juga. Saya guna warna yang lain. A ke B. Ada jawapan? Ada orang yang ada jawapan yang berbeza? Afzan, Afzan Imran. Sama medium. Sama juga. Okay. Hmm. Jehan dah dapat dah nilai what, uh, pressure potential B? 180. Okay, good. 180 kPa eh. Water potential untuk A? Sini water potential dia berapa? Jehan? Okay, kita tanya orang lain lah. Madam. Ya. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Uh, okay. Saya saya tak faham itu uh, information yang given. Huh? Um, I, I tak faham information yang given itu. Apa dia? Information yang given? What Maybe is it that you don't understand? Um, I don't know. It's just... I don't, I, yeah, I feel like it doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't know how to start to calculate. Like, what, why, why they give a um, model, um, put, solid potential minus, um, the thingy 200. Okay. Kita dah tahu, uh, solid potential is always negative. So, the value for A, the solid potential is negative. 250. Maknanya dia ada solut dalam ni. Ada solut dalam ni. Dengan nilai KPA negatif 250. 
Manakala bagi B, the solute is negative 300. So kat situ you boleh nampak lah kat mana yang higher water potential dengan water, lower water potential sebab tu dia suruh kira. So, so itu info je lah. Mereka, uh, the info is um, the solute potential is 250 is it? Yes. Oh, the I value. thought it's minus. I thought that one you, is You minus. ingat ini adalah rumors. Rumors. Oh no, no minus. Itu thingy huh? there. Like, Memang minus okay. lah. Memang minus. Solid potential dia punya value memang minus. Okay, okay. Thank you, man. Ah, okay. Untuk B, dia bagi water potential, value water potential. 120, okay. Water potential eh. So, 180 kat sini ni, negatif 120 sama dengan solid potential negatif 300. Sekarang dia disuruh kira pressure potential. Ini yang dia tak tahu. So, dapatlah jawapan 180 sini. Okay, 180 campur negatif 300 dapatlah negatif 120. Okay, siapa yang saya panggil tadi? Hajar Nurina. Berapa water potential untuk A? Saya um, terkena salah lah, Mereka. Saya <laughs> boleh cuba lagi nak kata salah. Apa value yang awak dapat? Awak tambahkan negatif 250 dengan 180 ke? Haa, saya tambah je. Tambah je? Haa, ah, okey. Kalau kita tengok gambar rajah tu, saya rasa ramai siapa yang Eva Sanggari dengan siapa tadi yang jawab hmm, arah pergerakan air daripada A ke B, dia tambahkan untuk ni, dia tambahkan negatif 250 tambah 180. Sebab ini adalah solute potential nilai ni. 180 dapat daripada ah, yang ni tadi. Betul? Betul ke? Betul. Betul. Yes. Tetapi, uh, you kena ingat. Sekarang ni, tengok kita tengok gambar ni balik. This diagram, this figure, this question shows the pressure potential only appear in B, solution B sebab ada ni. While A, dia tak ada. Tak ada. Yang ada cuma atmospheric pressure. So tak perlu tambah pressure potential kat sini. Jadi water potential is equal to solute potential which is negative 250. Faham tak? Mana color? Hmm? Faham tak? Uh, faham, faham madam. Ah, mana kena water potential dia negative 250 je lah madam. Yelah sebab dia tak ada pressure potential. Okay. Ah, sebab ni bertutup. Bila bertutup dia ada satu keupayaan untuk tolak pressure potential tu. Untuk tolak ni. Okay untuk tolak ni. Jadi kita kena ambil kira. Jadi seolah macam ada satu sistem yang bertutup kat sini. Kemudian air. Ha, bila kita ada ambil kira ni, dia akan kira water potential. Tadi dia dah tulis dah sini negatif 120. Secara logiknya, kat sini kalau kita tak kira pun kita boleh nampak dah. Okay, kat sini 100 negatif 120, the solute is less. The solute is less than uh, solute in A. So water actually move from B to A. Nampak tak? Actually dia dah bagi dah ni dengan ni. Betul? Betul madam. <laughs> eh sorry. Ah, yelah betul lah tu. Ha. Okay. Faham tak? Okay awak boleh tengok. Boleh tengok cara dia kira. Ha, itu yang logik saya dah explain. Saya dah explain uh, kenapa jawapan dia B ke A eh. Walaupun nampak pada peringkat awal kita nampak macam dia A ke B. Okay ni tak apa awak boleh teruskan cuba jawab soalan-soalan tersebut dah ada dia punya jawapan dia kan. Kita sambung dengan uh, pengangkutan aktif. Continue with active transport. Tra active transport is a movement of large molecule. Large Polar. 
eh, dia berpola, bercharge or large ionic molecule. It's either polar, you can use large polar molecule or large ionic molecule. Jadi dia melibatkan molecul bercharge. And what's more important, another part, part that is important is against concentration gradient. Jadi against concentration gradient maksudnya kena uh, melawan kecerunan kepekatan. And use energy. So ada tiga, tiga benda ni. Tiga benda. Pertama the types of the molecules involved. And then about the concentration gradient, the use of energy. Oh sorry, ada satu lagi tambah. And transport protein. So it must pass through the protein. Mesti ada transport protein. So aided by protein pump yang dipanggil transport protein tu, protein pump lah. Jadi sebab tu contoh paling paling ada, banyak ada dekat dalam badan kita ialah sodium potassium pump yang ada boleh jumpa dekat uh, sistem saraf kita eh, exon. The protein pump has two specific binding sites, specific, which is specific to sodium ions and potassium ion. Jadi ni contohnya lah, uh, sebab tu dia punya molecule yang terlibat adalah polar ions, eh? polar, polar molecule. So for each three sodium ions move into the cell or out of the cell, two potassium will be uh, move in in opposite direction. Jadi kalau sodium ion, nah okay, ni cytosol mana sodium ion keluar. So the ion di pump keluar melawan kecerunan kepekatan. Maksudnya there are more sodium ions at the outside of cell. So sodium ion needs to be transported out to increase the increase the concentration at the outside. And potassium uh, ion need to be transported in into the into the cell, right? Jadi tiga sodium ion bergerak dengan dua potassium ion. Jadi boleh tengok ni uh, binding. Ini tak perlu hafal lagi dia punya. Uh, mekanisma sebab ni sebenarnya akan di uh, awak akan belajar secara detail dia punya mekanisma ni dalam um, dalam chapter uh, apa nervous system nanti uh, cuma awak kena faham konsep uh, kenapa boleh berlaku perubahan perubahan bentuk protein uh, because when the sodium ion bind to the active site on the enzyme it will trigger the ATP to donate one phosphate group So the the phosphor phosphorylation kita panggil ni protein undergo phosphorylation. So the presence of the phosphate here causes the change of shape. Jadi bila dah berubah bentuk tu yang dia akan expel. Okay, expel out, expel out the sodium ion. Bila dah expel, ha, bentuk dia ni kat sini berubah. Tadi bentuk potassium punya binding site macam ni. Jadi bila bila dah berubah dah keluar potassium can bind to the can bind to the active site and the binding of the potassium will remove the phosphate the phosphate will detach from the protein so the detachment of the phosphate causing the uh, potassium to be uh, expelled ataupun uh, unbound to the protein into the cell eh? because uh, the protein Um, back to its original conformation shape. Ni boleh baca. Okay, bulk transport involve um, um, the crossing or uh, the the movement of large molecule, larger, eh, and in bulk. Maknanya lebih banyak dalam dalam kuantiti yang banyak. Uh, large molecules such as it can be a bacteria, okay, it can be a bacteria, it can be a protein, uh, it can be a, uh, whatever it is lah, a pathogen. So, size ni lebih besar. Dan kemudian mungkin lebih banyak, sekali banyak. And requires energy. So, there are two types of bulk transport, the endocytosis, exocytosis. Endo means in. So it is taking food into the cell while exocytosis is out. Uh, it involves 
taking out uh, sort of secretion uh. endocytosis is influx of material influx ni maksudnya membawa masuk lah the influx uh, the movement into the cell through invagination of plasma membrane ni invaginate mencerut ke dalam from outside of the cell to the cytoplasm jadi the invagination Ah, uh, dia akan bertau, okay, and form a vesicle. Okay, this is the vesicle. This is the food. There are two types of endocytosis: phago and pinocytosis. Phago is referring to the food, ataupun solid particle. While pino is referring to the fluid, ataupun dissolved materials. So it is more, it is smaller. It involves smaller particles. Jadi kalau phagocytosis involve large solid substance such as bacteria engulfed by the macrophage eh? itu contoh atau amoeba yang makan uh, chlamydomonas ke amoeba yang makan uh, another another organism so the solid substance are taken into cell by injecting in out oleh baca sini okay solid particles then enclose and form food vacuole Bila dia dah tertutup ni, dia akan jadi ni dipanggil sebagai food vacuole. Then the vacuole will fuse with lysosome. Dah belajar, kita dah belajar tadi uh, sebelum ni. Uh, lysosome. Lysosome will release the hydrolytic enzyme and digest the solid particles tadi. And then uh, the digested material will be absorbed into the cytoplasm or by the cell. Pinocytosis, uh, taking in dissolved solutes, dissolved particles. Ni contohnya dia ada microvilli. Microvilli ni dia jauh-jauh. Lepas tu bila dah ada dissolved substance, contohnya bahan terlarut kita magnesium eh sorry a uh, ailah magnesium ke apa ke yang kita nak serap. Jadi microvilli ni akan fuse with the adjacent microvilli and form vesicle. Okay, pinch off. Kemudian dia akan jadi vesicle kat dalam ni. Tapi dia tak perlukan lysosome sebab dia dissolve kan. Jadi dia terus Dia terus serap, directly absorb into cytosol. Two bezel, pinocytosis dengan phagocytosis. While exocytosis involve the ejection ataupun uh, uh, taking out substance, the secretion of substance from cytoplasm uh, out of the cell. Uh, jadi vesicle ni yang mengandungi bahan yang nak dirimbiskan uh, such as uh, hormone, for example hormone. So the vesicle will fuse with the plasma membrane and open up and release the substance. Okay, ada soalan boleh tengok kepada perbezaan dengan uh, perbezaan dan similarity persamaan eh antara kedua-dua phagocytosis dengan pinocytosis. Uh, asasnya kalau nak ingat phagocytosis involve eating. So kita makan selalunya perlukan kunyah, perlu menelan. Uh, jadi dia punya proses lebih complicated. Involve solid particle. Manakala pinocytosis ni kita minum, kita boleh min nganga mulut, tuang terus masuk dalam kita punya uh, trachea kan. Eh sorry, Ma lemas kalau masuk trachea. Esophagus. Alright. So masuklah esophagus terus kepada kita punya stomach. Jadi itu pinocytosis. Okay, uh, involve lysosome, does not involve lysosome. Okay, boleh tengok perbezaan ini untuk mengenal pasti ataupun untuk analisis, awak boleh analisis apa pengetahuan yang awak dah ada, tengok apa perbezaan antara passive and active transport. Okay, ada soalan tak? Medium nak tanya. Boleh. Uh, apa yang dimaksudkan dengan against concentration gradient kan Madam? Against concentration gradient, saya tunjuk tadi gambar kita nak melawan kecerunan kepekatan So this is low concentration This one is high concentration sebab tu dia against Okay uh, so ni high concentration dia nak bergerak tu it needs energy. Macam kita nak bergerak naik bukit kita perlu tenaga yang lebih berbanding kalau kita turun. This is follow concentration gradient. This is against. 
Okey, boleh? Faham? Oh, maksudnya, Madam, kalau yang pasif transport ni, dia daripada high ke low, kan? Ha, ya. Yeah. Tapi kalau yang aktif, dia against means dia daripada low ke high. Ya, yeah, betul. Okey, thank you, Madam. Sama.